a lot and thank you for the invitation. I will continue to talk about feet and uh, I will have some focus on RAS since this is uh, getting quite high attention this, this time. And I, uh, it's uh, almost the same as uh, Sigrion showed you before. This is the development of uh, the ingredients in feed for salmon. And this is based on uh, ingredients in Norwegian salmon. Uh, if we look some, some years back in 1990, all the ingredients were based on uh, fish meal and fish oil. And some binders. If we jump ahead uh, some 10 years, we can see now that plant protein sources are uh, con uh, comprising a larger part of the diet. And uh, then plant oils came along. And if we look at the development until today, or this is uh, data from 2016, we can see that plant raw materials are comprising the major part of the pellet for salmon. Uh, we are going to look a little bit at what this does with the feet. Also, uh, some focus on the technical quality, because we have heard about the nutritional requirements, but also the quality of the pellet is very important, in particular when we talk about grass, recirculated aquaculture. So, I don't know, there are some colors that are disappearing from the slide, but uh, I think it's possible to see anyway. So, I showed you the results from Norwegian uh, salmon feed. In Chile, uh, they also use avian meat. This is not used in, in the Norwegian salmon diets, and it's not because it doesn't work, it's because my, uh, people are afraid of what is the market going to, how is the market responding. Um, but I think in the future, and in not so long time, we are going to see also uh, byproducts from land living animals in feeds for salmon. If we look at the level of, uh, I'm sorry, it's not possible to see because this color disappears. Uh, these uh, statistics, this is from a quality. Here there are three different feeds. And uh, I, I wanted to see how do they perform. Three different feeds. Uh, pellet uh, size is uh, between two and three millimeters, so it's for small fish. Then, uh, what do I have in the kitchen? I don't know if it's called in English, coffee finger maybe? Uh, and it, it has a very good uh, ability to, to take up uh, of, uh, of fat. So I left these feeds on the kitchen table for six hours. In my kitchen, approximately 20 hours, 20 degrees. And then I looked at how is the fat leakage from these feeds. Okay, fat leakage. This is something we don't want. And the uh, I thought, okay, what's the problem with this one? <coughs> High fat leakage, but the reason that we see that it's so red is because in this feed there is astaxanthin, so there's pigment in this feed. Okay, I continue. Then I took a spoon from my drawer and put it in a glass with water. And then I stirred as fast as I could, two minutes, and how does the water look like? This is the result. And uh, pretty obvious. This one is really a disaster. I would never recommend anybody to buy this feed. And I will not tell you who made it. <laughs> <laughs> and this one, ah, it's not too good, though, but this one, nice. Not perfect, but yeah. And we can see that the pellets are in here. We can see, still see the pellets, but here, no. Then I took out the pellets on the sieve and put it on uh, the coffee filter. And this is how the pellets look like after six hours in the water. 
Look at these pellets. These ones, oh, they almost look the same as before. Nice and soggy. And this one, ah, not too good. So, I, I'm actually a leader of a small RAS research facility. Of course, I will buy this one. And uh, I can tell you that this is actually a RAS feed. This is produced to be used in a RAS system. And it appears that the producer, the feed company, has succeeded, at least when it comes to the quality of the pellet. Okay, it was just a, uh, an illustration. And then I keep the, the glass with the water and I, I, I see how, how does it look like. And uh, this was the first one, uh, doesn't look good. And these are the other ones. And if I, uh, let me see, yeah. You can see that there is this organic material here, and it, it will be in the RAS system. Of course, a disaster. We don't want that feed. Okay. Then there is another thing, and that is the uh, leakage of fat from pellets. And this is taken from the inside of the, of the stomach of a rainbow trout. So the, these are the pellets, and what you see here, this red uh, stuff here, it's lipids. It's leakage of fat. And I don't know, some of you maybe have some experience with the uh, farming of rainbow trout and you have this fat gulping. And if there is this leakage of fat, it ends out in the system. And in the raw system, this is of course not good. And pellets with low water stability, you can get this problem, but you can also get this problem with rainbow trout if, for example, the salinity is, is flocked away. Okay. Uh, then I am going to show you some results. Because what should we, what should we feed the fish with? What should be our new feed resources? And uh, I'm going to show you uh, results from, from this, uh, our small research uh, center. I just wanted to show you this because maybe you know something, some Icelandic young people who want to be specialists in RAS, and then we offer <laughs> this education at the Norwegian University of Life Sciences. Okay, uh, uh, some results. Uh, this is with, uh, in an R&D project together with Alder Aqua, where we are testing out insects. And insects means uh, larvae from a black soldier fly, this annoying black fly that you have in your, in your house. I don't know if you on Iceland have, uh, have thought of producing insects as feed raw material. Maybe it could be something. Uh, so what we did was to feed the fish either with a uh, whole black soldier fly or with meal, meaning uh, protein meal in two different concentrations, uh, or we used oil. And you know, many people say, okay, I, I have done a feed experiment and I used this ingredient and I got these results. What you need to ask is what did you uh, take out? If you take out fish meal, yeah, you can get some other results than if you take out something else. In our case, we are interested in finding alternatives to soy protein concentrate. We don't go deep into this. I'm just going to tell you about, the, uh, about some results. So what we found was uh, when giving the fish uh, black soldier fly, it stimulated the length growth of the fish. So the fish grew faster. Uh, these results here are for rainbow trout, and we can see that uh, you know these letters. It says that uh, it's statistically significant. Uh, for oil, not that clear. But for whole black soldier fly and, and protein, we increase the weight uh, or the length. Similar trend for the rainbow trout, but not uh, significantly different. So, uh, feces. You know, 
Actually, the feed ingredients have a very high impact on the feces, on the texture of the feces. So what about insects? And what we could see, you know, we are scoring the, the, the feces as solid, firm, as score one, that's the lowest. Then we have score two, semi-solid, and then three is diarrhea. So we want uh, the score to be as low as possible. And what we see is that feeding the fish with insect uh, meal or whole insect is improving the quality of the feces. I mean, how happy can you be when you get such results? <laughs> yes, really, really nice shit. And here are, is the same results but shown in another way. Uh, what we uh, can see here, uh, or if we have focus on, uh, on this uh, light gray, this should be as small as possible. This is diarrhea. Uh, and the worst fish with most diarrhea, these are the fish on control. Actually, this is not so uh, seldom we see with fish fed very high level of soybean um, protein concentrate. So nice, uh, nice fecal quality. Uh, more fish with uh, solid or semi-solid uh, feces by giving the fish insects. So this was all. say like with insects. This is a natural diet of salmon in fresh water. Yeah. So, um, I mean, the system of salmon should be adapted. But when it comes to the, like the plant ingredients, first of all, uh, fish doesn't have requirement for any raw material. Fish has requirement for amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, minerals. So, in that sense, it doesn't really matter where it comes from. But some of these plant ingredients, they have anti-nutrients. And they can make problems in, for example, causing gut inflammation and things like this. So, um, like soy protein can be processed in many, many different ways. And uh, the way the soy is processed for salmon, this is very mild and nice nicely processed, but it seems like there is some limit. In, in, in my experience, for example, the fava beans, it's, uh, I, I, I don't know what it is with fava beans, but it, it's, it's not a good match with some, in my opinion. So, partly I would say yes. Good. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. <laughs> and uh, about this fecal uh, texture of yours, then I, <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about the insects. Uh, because, I mean, um, how do you think that uh, the insect meat is actually influencing this texture? Is it because the microbiota is changing when uh, the fish eats it? It will change the microbiota? And, uh, in any case, uh, what was the concentration of the uh, insect uh, meal in the diet, and can you lower it so we can? It is probably quite costly, right? Yes. Uh, first of all, um, you know when you do uh, feed experiments like this, uh, you can you can uh, interpret them in two different ways. Either you can see you can say that taking out Soy protein concentrate improves the fecal quality. 
Or you can say introducing uh, insect meal is improving the pickle quality. So it's like we, this is a very new area. So I think it is a very relevant question. So what is actually causing uh, these improvements, what you see here? But uh, good pickle quality in combination with uh, increased length growth, this is very promising. Uh, and when it comes to the microbiota and effect of uh, insect meal, yeah, I have not uh, studied this myself, but I have colleagues who have done these uh, studies in, the, in these foods of Norway, and uh, they have found that insect uh, is affecting the microbiota composition. Yeah, but I cannot say if that is causing any texture deviations, variations. Any more questions? Uh, Lourdes? Thank you for the presentation. Just a question on the insect meat. Uh, insect meat eat something. So, uh, for this particular study, of course, it's feed for the insects. <coughs> insects have has to be fed on offal, poultry, or, or any offal. Yeah. So, would that be a uh, uh, an element in the equation, what is the feed to the insects? Because that will eventually give the, uh, the uh, an impact on the, the nutritional value of the insect meat. Absolutely, and you are so correct. I, I, I'm not sure, so if I said that it's plant offal, I am probably right. Uh, that it's from uh, uh, plants. But I'm not 100% sure, so I will not uh, say it's plants. <laughs> but, but that it's uh, causing uh, or that it's affecting the, the quality of the insect meal, absolutely. In, in our case, here is the fatty acid composition. And what you know is, uh, for example, the insect uh, oil, it has very high concentration of uh, saturated fatty acids. So if you, for example, grow the insects on, uh, on uh, byproducts or offal from fish, uh, the concentration of, uh, uh, of the long-chain marine fatty acids will increase. So actually you are able to manipulate the composition of the insect meal, so absolutely, I, I, I agree. Any more questions? If, if not, then uh, thank you.